Hello and welcome to the Meditation Conversation, podcast to support your spiritual revolution. I'm your host, Kara Goodwin, and you're in for such a treat with this delightful episode with Jamie Butler channeling Maitland. Jamie was my guest in episode 311. She is this huge light, and if you haven't heard that one yet, you definitely want to catch it. And in this episode, we have the great honor of being joined by Maitland, a higher dimensional energy that Jamie channels. And I'm telling you, if you're feeling off in any sort of way right now, Maitland is going to naturally help you lift out of it with her spirit. Not only are you going to get to feel joyful, but she gives tons of advanced knowledge about multidimensionality, what it's like to die as a human and begin to experience yourself again as spirit. She explains timelines and what's in store for us in 2024. We just finished recording this and I feel like I'm flying, so I'm super excited for you to tune into this. And be sure to check out Jamie's YouTube channel where she has more content with Maitland, which is at Jamie Butler Medium. And she also has tons of classes to help you connect with your spirit. So many valuable resources at jamiebutlermedium.com, so be sure to check her out. And also check out karagoodwin.com where you can get a free guided meditation to help you connect with the calmness, peace, and light within you. You can also get your own personal meditation slash energy transfer to help you with whatever challenges you're working through right now. And you can also join my Healing Hearth membership to connect with an amazing community of wonderful souls. We get together once or twice a week to meditate and talk about high vibe concepts and there are at least a hundred guided meditations available on demand. I've got lots of resources to assist you in your meditation and spiritual journey, so be sure to check out karagoodwin.com. And now, enjoy this episode. Thank you so much for being here, Jamie. I'm so excited to have you and to meet Maitland today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, or having us. (laughs) Yes. So you were on, let's see, a month or two ago, yes. and we talked about Maitland's, but in case anybody wasn't here, you are a trans channeler, and Maitland is one of the entities that you channel pretty frequently, and she's very special and unique. Can you give a little bit of an introduction for us? All I know is I'm enjoying that you just called her special and unique. <laughs> um, yes, she is playful, youthful. Uh, She can take very large concepts and make them very digestible, very presentable. And she does this by staying young, youthful. She presents herself as a nine-year-old girl, which when I first met her, I thought that was quite odd. And we have this humanizing thing when we come across a nine-year-old. We don't think them to know the answers to the universe. We think them to be creative and imaginative and all of this. And Maitland describes that when she transitioned, she really enjoyed staying young because she liked the energy of being silly and more interactive and just almost like prodding people to find their play and their fun. And I met Maitland actually through my teacher, who was a trance channeler. And Maitland was the first entity that I learned how to utilize trance channeling with. And actually, when I teach my classes, I encourage my students to connect to Maitland and have her come in and be your little guru and helping you approach their own trance channeling skills. I love it. And that what's fun, we were talking before we started, is that I, I don't, I'm not a channeler, but even when I was just like an hour ago, just doing something else actually, but she, but I felt this presence at this beautiful, just, I don't even want to say innocent, but like excited presence. And leading up to this, I've been a little bit nervous and just excited, but a little bit nervous too. And I just felt this joy and this excitement. And I even said out loud I was like Maitland if you're here I'm so excited that we're gonna that we're gonna be together and thank you so much and it was really amazing so it's fun to hear you say that with your students you encourage them to connect with her too oh yes I bring her into all the classes (laughs) and uh, before we got on zoom my assistant Colleen who's off screen right now 
say hi. You so already am. She knows. Yeah. Um, um, we were talking about how we could feel the excitement. And as I was putting my whites on, my work clothes, when I go to Trans Channel, I was like, oh my God, I'm getting a little like tummy twirls and things like that, which I know normally do. I've been doing trans channeling with Maitland for, is it over 30 years now? Yeah. Uh, I can't yeah. say it like that's crazy. <laughs> Since yesterday, right. um, I've been doing this. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> or 30 years, one or the other. You choose. Oh, uh, so do you need any kind of preparation before before we bring her in? Nope. Oh, I've taken my preparations. Okay. So I have white clothes on that helps eliminate some of the frequencies in clothing. They're all natural materials like cotton. So that makes it an easier frequency to shift into altered states of consciousness with. And I have my jewelry off. I'm going to take my glasses off and it'll give me a few minutes or a minute. And okay. we let Maitland come in and she will say hi when she's here and just enjoy the conversation. But know that when we're done, I'm not going to be here to say goodbye. So I'll just say my goodbyes now and all my gratitude and appreciation for you just being so curious and wanting to play with Maitland and get into some really good content. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Have fun. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Jeez, ready. <clears throat> Maitland goes, don't forget to say, if you're sensitive, <laughs> like, oh my God, if you're sensitive, you might feel a shift, like in your own body, even if you're just watching the video, like you're not here with me live, but you might feel a lift. If you like it, soak it up. If you don't really enjoy it, and just push away from your device or get something to drink or to nibble on. And if you're practicing your clairvoyant skills, you can still do that via video. And you can check out between my ear and my right shoulder, not the wall, but just the space here. Sometimes you can see the light exchange of Maitland and Jamie Ooh. as I'm going to lift up and she's going to drop in. Okay, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Have a good time. Thank you. I would a stretch. <laughs> and you normally don't have to stretch, but today is a stretching day. Oh. Hi. Hi, Maitland. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for joining today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Can I move this closer? Like this? Okay, I'm going to do this. Hi. Hi. How are you? I am always good. Wonderful. I'm so happy that you're here. Can you share with us a little bit about you? So I know that you have incarnated on this planet. Uh -huh. Can you talk a little bit about where you are now, where you reside, what dimension, what information you can give us? I Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Jill, this is the first time I've been interviewed. This is really exciting. I I talk to groups and um, I like teaching and um, I like answering a lot of questions, but this is the first time I've um, ever been interviewed. So oh, What um, an honor. I'm yeah. so happy. So my name is Maitland, M-A-I-T-L-A-N-D. And I usually talk about my last incarnation because that's the way that people think about lives and incarnations that you think of it as reincarnation and that time is linear and I talk about my name Maitland comes from my last life I, I was living in Chicago I was the first born American in my family my family was from Germany and they came over and I had a little baby brother and I passed away when I was really young when I was six and when I passed away from that life the reason I <clears throat> Jamie has a cough 
it feels weird in her body right now. It's like, <laughs> like only in her face from here to here. The rest of it feels perfectly fine. <laughs> oh, I hope that's okay that I say that. I can uh, I say whatever I want. I think it for me. Yes. Okay. The reason I chose the life that of Maitland is because of my dad in that lifetime. And because my dad would just find me so funny and he would even bring me to adult parties and he would just encourage me to talk and to speak to adults. And he didn't really treat me like I was lesser than because I was little. And people found me very entertaining because I was so outspoken. And when I passed away, I passed away in a car accident with my mom and my baby brother, but my dad survived. And when we passed away, I liked the idea of being the more of the outgoing, outspoken. And I really wasn't that interested in growing up with that Maitland identity, which we can talk about what that really means in a little bit. And so um, I really wanted to help people on earth remember where they came from and, and find their voices more. I really like helping people connect to their animals and to other multidimensional planes, multidimensionals. And I um, actually really like to talk about economics, but some people are just like, that's weird because I'm a little bit younger. But those are my favorite topics. And so when I transitioned, I made the, I guess it's, you can call it a request, like an ask that I really wanted to help people on earth. And I work with thousands and thousands and thousands of people on earth and I help them find their joy and their happiness through laughter and play. Um, being on earth, finding your smile through laughter and play, but also helping them remember where they came from. And so that's how I ended up uh, doing this kind of, you can call it work if you want, but it's really not work. <laughs> it's just part of what you get interested in. It's like having a whole bunch of friends. So there's that. Well, what was the other question? I was curious about, are, <clears throat> would you say you're in a specific dimension when you're not channeling? When you're not being channeled, excuse me. Um, that's kind of hard to answer. Yes, I am. Because where I am, I think a lot of um, like Catholics would call it heaven. I think spiritual people would call it home. And it is a higher dimensional plane than what humans reside in. And humans mostly focus on the 1 to 4D. Mm -hmm. So you are a multidimensional being. I am multidimensional being and I can blend with you because I can come down into other like lower dimensional planes that you reside in. And I don't want you to think that lower means lesser than. What I mean by lower is you reside in dimensional planes that are more dense and dense is not bad. Dense is an experience. I like to call, I like to call life on earth an extreme sport because it's true. <laughs> yeah. You all are doing a very big extreme sport. Love that. Uh, so I have multidimensional planes that I move from as well. And it's silly to talk about it because the way that you number them and understand them is not exactly the way that we live in them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can give you names and numbers, but it's just not really going to translate when you get here. You're going to laugh about it. <laughs> well, so is it like, is it almost like superimposed on Earth? Like, are, would you consider you're your sort of in our atmosphere and our environment? Absolutely. Okay, fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Would it's you like to? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to talk to you about, like, layering air. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that a lot of people can get a visual on air. But a lot of the empty space that you see around you actually is not empty at all because you are perceiving what is around you through the density of your experience, of, of your human experience. And so, you know, you are looking at a wall. I cannot move through a wall, you will say. And so you will move through a door or climb out a window or do something like that. So you have these kind of laws or rules that have shaped belief systems and vice versa. So you live in a very particular kind of a way and experience. Okay, we do the same thing. We reside in the same kind of atmosphere, though we are 
It's really hard to explain. We have, we are perceiving our environment different than you are. We can move through your environment because what we occupy is in a completely different set of laws and rules. If you're just listening, I'm using air quotes. <laughs> laws and rules. And so those shape how we experience our environment. And the two just blend right through. Actually, there's not just two. There's many of them. It's an infinite amount. And there's an infinite amount of dimensions. And I know that humans and some people have documented that well, there's nine dimensions or there's 12 dimensions. And it's very fixed. And each one has certain characteristics. And that's good and well and everything. But you're forgetting that each entity, like you are an entity. Every human is an entity. Every animal is an entity. Anything that can hold life, like a plant and a tree, is an entity and a spirit and a multidimensional entity, right? So every entity has their own way of viewing and perceiving what's around them. So I can say I'm a ninth dimensional being, but the way that I view and perceive my ninth dimension I can get different qualities and characteristics out of it than someone else in the same dimensional plane. That's just like standing next to someone and you have studied math all your life. And so you understand mathematics, but you're standing next to someone who does not like mathematics. And so you are actually going to view your environment different because you're quantifying spatial awareness and depth and you're problem solving your life in a different way than the person standing next to you because they're not using that basic math knowledge or advanced math knowledge. And so though you are in the same dimension, you're operating it differently. So it's hard when you talk about finite words when you're trying to apply them to subtle light energy expression, which is, it's just almost impossible because there's not finite, there's nothing really fixed. And humans really like to have things that are fixed, you yeah. know, it's yes or no. Yeah. And it's just, we're all like in the middle. Right. It's an and instead yeah. of an or. Yeah. You did a beautiful job explaining that. I think oh. that that makes a lot of sense. And I understand that you're working in subtler energies and yeah. that we work in very dense, you know, physical. I call it gross energy. Yeah, that's good. Gross energy. Yes. So in your dimension or in your home environment, is there a physicality? What do you mean? Like, would you say you have a body or is it more light or how, what are you like as a, as an entity in your home? You have a light body, mm -hmm. but I, you can call it Oh, a body, but when you mean physicality, do you do you mean like the kind where you like come into something and you don't merge, you stop? It's like, like well, that's this what I'm hand curious. Is separate from this hand, I, that's what I'm curious. Is it like nope. that? Nope, nope. I can have this hand and this hand, and I go like this, and they can merge right through each other. But I can also take my perception. So it's like, it's a belief, it's a thought thing. I will try to say this as humanized as I can. So you would take your thought and you're going to think of a clap. You're going to think of resistance, stopping. And then you're going to feel it, like in your light body. And then you're going to apply the emotion to it of like clashing. And then we can do that and we can stop it. But it's not our natural state of being. But we do have the ability to do that. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. It's like the things, which is interesting because like you were saying in the beginning where it's like density is not bad and if physicality, it's not bad and, and the lower dimensions aren't bad. But, you know, things that we take for granted, like we can just clap, you know, we just do it. And we don't have to think about it, you Ooh. know. And Or eat food. Food is so good. Yeah. And, and that's not part of your experience. Mm -mm. No, I don't need food. Yeah. And, and then and I really, I, I miss hugs. I miss being held. Uh, like held, squeezed. We get squeezed. Uh, that's good stuff. I love that. Oh, that's beautiful. So 
Another thing that we hear about with other dimensions is that a lot of them are parts of collectives. So there's not so much the individual entity. So tell us your experience. Are you part of a collective? Well, um, home or heaven, the place where entities on earth after their body ceases to thrive, that their soul transitions to a spirit, they come here. But here, home has different areas. Um, and home is creative, like a conscious group. It's, you know, the belief system on earth, like when somebody transitions, that if you forget them, if you don't think about them and you don't carry their memory on, that they're really gone. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of cultures will bring the thoughts of their ancestors forward and put the ancestors' photographs on the altar and they will go and they honor them like once a day every year and they just bring that history forward mm -hmm. there's a little bit of truth to that not so much that the energy needs to come from the humans on earth but in home where we are creating something like a community and let's say we need a, a um humanize it right human a building we need a building and we need a building to store stuff in and we need to have it organized and so when that is created, that's created by everyone. Well, not exactly everyone's, but let's just blanket statement this for a second. That everybody is thinking about that building and putting their thoughts into that building and creating the structure of the building. And therefore, the building is there because people are thinking about it and contributing to it and showing up to it and making it exist because they're using it and being a part of it. So it's not that we go and get wood and elements to come in and build it and then you walk by and go oh he's totally unaware of this building and all of a sudden it's there hi building you don't have that kind of separation we are all yes the collective but separate at the same time so it's taking the same thing that's happening on earth you are all part of a collective like the joke is that there's really only one person on earth because you all have the same energy and if you have the same energy that the trees have, you have the same energy of insects and animals and fish. You have, it's the same light energy, but you operate as separate. The scientific term that I like a whole bunch is called Holon. It's H-O-L-O-N. And Holon is where you're a part of a whole, but when it's separated, you are a piece of the whole, but whole of yourself. And you look at the piece and it has everything that was in the whole in the piece. So you are separate, but a whole of the entity. And that's you. And that's us too when we're at home. So we are a part of everything, but we can still have what you might call individualized experiences and thoughts, but it contributes to the all. There's definitely no secrets here. I know I think half of anyone who's listening is like, what? No, I have to have my secrets. I don't want anybody to know that I eat a lot of ice cream at night or that I watch a certain reality show or something. I don't know. But there's just, there's no need for it because there's no judgment where I live. There's no, without the judgment, there's no need to withhold information because all information and all expressions of who you are are absolutely accepted and loved. And boy, when you get here, a lot of the humans, when I, I watch you leave the life on earth and you come to home, a lot of them are like, but is, they feel like they can't breathe because they're expanding with all this incredible compassion and love. And they thought they were loved on earth, but all of a sudden they really understand what love is. You know, so it's, um, I am rambling, I think. No, you're not. No, you're, okay. it's really beautiful. I love this. It's wonderful. And you've mentioned a couple of times the human death experience, and you've had your human death experience. I have. Can you give us a little bit of insight about what it is like upon death for humans? Well, it's a little different for everyone because there's there's different areas in home that you can, um, that are available to you. So let's say if you live a life and you have a belief system that you have worked on all your life, and it is a belief system that there is nothing after this life. Nothing. 
And so it's ash, ashes to ashes. And upon your death, you die. And guess what continues is your soul and your body becomes a spirit. But that spirit has been shaped by your belief systems for all of those decades that you lived on earth. So now the soul is in a new environment, but it's still using its old belief systems. And it's saying, nothing exists. So guess what happens? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing happens. And so they are left in this nothingness until something sparks. And the spark is called curiosity. The spark is like, I think I'm thinking. Am I still existing? Where am I? And then maybe they think about their dog or their grandmother or somebody that they recall a fondness of. And if they have transitioned, then that leaves an open pathway for them to come in. So the dog can come in, the dog's energy and say, hi, remember me? And wait, now we have a conversation between the two until that spirit decides in their own timing and free will to awaken themselves. There's nobody here in the home where I am that says, you have to be a certain way and you got to get here and you got to get to work. And you got to forgive yourself and you got to do these things and you got to mark it off your list because the only power that can give you things to do or judge you is yourself. That's it. Like if you have a religious belief system and you have a God in your life, God is going to love you unconditionally no matter what. God is not going to judge you, harm you. God is going to lift their arms out or reach their arms out and scoop you up no matter what experiences you're having. And if you have a spiritual belief system, it's the act of the universe or all that is or greater love or source is always going to reach out and support and love you because you are the expression of source. You are the expression of God. And without your experiences, then how could God know himself or herself? How could source know themselves? <laughs> Without you being exactly you. you, you can't make any mistakes that way. So when you pass away, whatever you believe is going to happen to you on earth is what is going to occur to you. So there are times where spirit, people transition and they end up in the nothing until they find themselves. There's times where people transition from something really traumatic, like an accident or their death was really sudden and it wasn't expected. And they end up in a healing space. And their energetic body is getting healed and mended until they have the strength to come to. And then sometimes you transition and you just walk right over here and you go, hey, Maitland, hey. you know exactly where you are and what's going on. And, and you're just like, oh, I can breathe again. I'm, look, I can move my fingers and I can do all these things and I'm full of love. And sometimes people, when they transition, they're confused. They come over and they're like, am I dreaming? I don't understand. And then family, the big thing on this side is that family comes to greet you. But what I like is when your animal family comes to greet you too and your spirit teams. So all the animal companions that you have, have experienced in your lifetime, they all show up for you as well. And I've, I've seen that trees and other creatures show up to greet you as well. Because uh, sometimes people are really attached to the landscape and to their garden and to a particular plant they talk to all the time. Like Jamie has a plant, Martha. Martha's going to be 27 this year. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a little bonsai. Well, she's not so little anymore. But so I'm certain if Martha's no longer here, she's going to be greeting Jamie. So there's things like that. It's just the biggest commonality in it is what you believe in about afterlife in your human body is what you carry with you and then how willing you are to change those beliefs you know what is your turnaround on saying in your day-to-day -day life i have a belief system and all of a sudden you come across an experience and you're like oh that's shocking that goes against what i believe in and I think I've just learned something. So I'm going to let go of that belief because it's now old for me and I'm going to put it away and I'm going to grab on this new experience because it aligns with me more and I got a lot more happiness and I feel more expansive and now I continue on. How quick can you make that transition?
because that quickness is very, very, very useful when you transition. Because when you transition, you get to quickly under you quickly understand that it's love base and that you are home and that you are free and everything really is okay. Because we have some people who transition and they want to stay human and they don't have a quick turnaround in belief systems and they beat themselves up because they didn't say goodbye or they didn't do something that they wanted to do that was on their list and they forgot to and they develop this anger or upset or sadness, which I have to tell you, it takes a lot of energy to make those things here. It's easy to make those emotions on earth, almost too easy. Yeah. <laughs> but here, it is not easy. When you meet a spirit who has transitioned into home and they are showing sadness or disappointment in themselves, they are on a hard learning curve because they are making themselves stay down, which if they just had a quick turnaround in their belief systems, then they'd be okay. Wow, that is so fascinating. And I love that, that we ultimately, it is our beliefs that dictate our experience. And it's that's really empowering in a lot of ways. You are way more powerful than you give yourself credit for. Really, you are. Yeah. Humans are extremely powerful. So where you are, where home is, is there a birth and death there? Is the Maitland version of you there eternal? Yeah. Just like the version of you as Kara is already there because time isn't linear. So if I look at all of my lives, my incarnations that I have had on earth and other locations, they come together in what you can call higher consciousness. Some people call it oversoul or supersoul, but that, I like to call it the center of the wheel. If you look at bicycle wheel with all the little spokes, spokes, yeah. And then the tire wheel is on the outside. Like your higher consciousness, your supersoul, your oversoul is in the middle. And it's connected to all the spokes and all the spokes are the lives, whether they are past lives, future lives, multidimensional lives, animal lives, plant lives, whatever living entity that you've decided to express yourself as are the spokes. And then the tire is this kind of 3D, I guess you can call it 3D, denser connection to each of the lives. Like when you have a deja vu or aha moment, and you're like, I think I've done this before. I know something. It's like your consciousness has come out onto the tire and it's maneuvering around and connecting to other lives individually, one at a time kind of a thing. But when you raise your consciousness up the spoke and you get to the center and you have your consciousness sitting in the higher consciousness space, you can view and perceive all of your incarnations at once. And they're always occurring. I'd like can I keep talking? Yes, please. I, I like some of the healing techniques on earth that use the altered states of consciousness, like a hypnosis or the theta. I think it's called theta healing. Deep, deep meditations, transcendental meditation. Like when we get to those places and actually when we get to those places, I should say it like that, kind of like yeah. we're the <laughs> center of the, the bicycle wheel. When we get to those places, you can view all your other expressions of self, so all of your other lives. And then you can influence them from your higher consciousness. So what this means is that you can then shift, influence, change, heal. Like these are all, um, you know, moving fluid energies um, into other lifetimes. So if they're having a hard lesson or a hard time and that lifetime is like pushing up against your current lifetime, or mimicking or paralleling. There's all kinds of terms we could use, but you know, influencing your current life. And you're just like, I don't know why I'm always doing this, but it's actually occurring in another lifetime. If you use those styles of healing where you come into altered states of consciousness and you're able to view that other lifetime and you work it out and you address it and you heal it, higher consciousness then feeds that to all the lifetimes. 
And so that energy goes through all of the incarnations, even the current one that you're having, and it can resolve. Resolve, almost feeling like magic, like some of your thoughts or your actions or your pain, your suffering, that which you feel like you're not really in alignment with that you need to make peace with. That's usually what healing is all about. You're like, I don't really understand you and we're not really in alignment, so I need to work on you. And that's usually called healing. <laughs> is the act of providing shift or change to something. So I like that the fad right now on earth is that these types of healings are growing and science is catching up to this and they are recording the brainwave activity and they're able to understand what's happening inside of the human you know, experience and how it's reaching beyond the human experience. Like there are chemical reactions and responses happening in the body without a cause. They are able to measure effect without cause. And that's pretty, I think, inspiring on earth right now because a lot of your belief systems are all based on duality, time is linear, and you have a cause and effect. We saw this happen. Now we know this is going to occur. And now when they're measuring the body's biofeedback waves and measuring the neurotransmitters, they're measuring change, effect, but they can't observe the cause. The cause is outside, outside of what they can measure. Yeah. Oh, that is fascinating. Isn't it? Yes. And so using that, the wheel that you were describing, mm -hmm. so am I understanding correctly that you are the center of the wheel? And then Maitland was one of the yes. spokes. Okay. Maitland was a spoke. But I like to use her, I like to use that incarnation of me because I really align with how joyful she was and always happy and liked herself, loved herself, and her family loved her. And when and she grew up, um, she, she grew up in like the 1930s, late 1920s to 30s, and, and children were supposed to be quiet and polite and not really interact with a lot of adults and her parents didn't do that with her and I just I loved the confidence that was developed and so when I wanted to start helping people on earth find that which I had for a short amount of time I went through Maitland. That makes total sense so you can broadcast that energy and that joy. That's and I came to see you before we did this and I poked around and we had some giggles and fun and I made your belly all happy. I like doing it. that for people. Oh, yes. And you did do that. Thank you so much. I loved it. So I wanted to get your understanding or not your understanding, but I, I wanted you to share what you know about timelines, because this is um, something that people are trying to understand on Earth now. And it can be hard for us to understand because things are so linear for us and, and we experience time. But then we, a lot of us understand intellectually that time is a, it, it, an illusion or a tool that we have here in the third dimension that doesn't exist everywhere. But can you try to explain a little bit about timelines and how that works from your perspective. Are you asking about timelines or are you asking about incarnations or are those the same thing for you? Well, I see, I see them as a little bit different so that some people talk about how each person that's living here that we have different timelines and then maybe we have timeline possibilities as a collective as well. You got it. Because <laughs> sometimes when people ask about timelines, they're really wanting to merge timeline with incarnation. Okay. But we're going to take a particular incarnation, a spoke in the wheel. And now we're going to look at the spoke in the wheel. And we're going to observe the timeline of the spoke in the wheel, right? Yes. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Where to begin? Let's start here. Your particular experience in the denser dimensions, 
the belief system is developed that time indeed is linear and it does not behave any other way, can't behave any differently. It goes in a sequence, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And you have a belief system that you are independent and you are making your own decisions and that you have free will. Are we, are we good so far on this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that, that's what we're operating under. But a reality is that, yes, you may feel independent, but you are not wholly independent. Maybe some spiritual people who have gone through an, an, an enlightenment path or an, some awakening, they have the understanding of, oh, each life, each incarnation or spoke in the wheel has agreements or contracts that have been made before the life began. And so you sat around with your spirit family and some other friends in spirit, and you were like, I want to achieve X, Y, Z, and can you guys play these roles for me? Yes. And so they all incarnate into a similar timeline to match your incarnation so that they can play these roles for you. And therefore, with this kind of thinking, you've also then agreed to some form of destiny because this agreement I have, it was meant to be. No matter how much I free will myself out of the situation, it's going to come back and it's going to present itself to me. That is a point of destiny. Okay. Okay. So you come into your incarnation, but you are not by yourself. You are not an independent. You are part of a collection, a consciousness, a mass consciousness. And part of that mass consciousness, what it does is when we'll call it like a magical level, we'll call it halfway, when 50% of the mass consciousness develops a certain belief. This changes the energetic structure of the timeline that you are in. So you can imagine, I like this, my, my friend in spirit, Grace, was talking about this the other day, and she was talking about how when we look at the earth as a whole, everybody's in their incarnation, and they are collectively experiencing a timeline together. And you imagine that there are, we can call them like the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E. And they're all standing in a line. And A is the leader. B is in second position, C. So they're all present, but there's only one that can be a leader at a time. And let's say on Earth, all of a sudden, 50% of people develop a new concept and it flows around and they understand now A is obsolete. So A bumps back to second position and B becomes in first position. And then when B shifts in, other people start waking up, the other 50%, and they go, this isn't what it was like before. Something has changed. I think that's not what happened, but it, in the news, they're saying that is what happened, but I remember it differently. And so you have these, what you might call glitches where you have experiences that you're absolutely certain were that way, but then now with, with time, <laughs> with, <laughs> with your belief in linear time later, it's presented in a different way and you're like, wait, no. So that is because the mass knowledge are getting together energetically. And what's fascinating, when you put energy together, it does not really follow your traditional mathematics. So it's not, one person plus one person equals two people. It's like when one person energetically has a thought and this other person has an energetic thought, they get together and it's four times stronger. It grows and it feeds itself when it gets together. Think of tuning forks. You hit one fork and you put it next to the other one and it will resound the, the frequency just by sound. And then it starts to hit and reverberate and echo and get louder and bigger and thicker. And so this is what's happening energetically on Earth, consciously throughout the world, that can influence your timeline. So it feels as if you are glitching, where you had one experience, but then it's different. Mm. But there are other things at play, too. 
So can we go deeper now? Yes, please. Okay. So you have an incarnation. You're a spoke on the wheel. Every choice that you make, every single, like what shoes to wear? When do I brush my teeth? Should I say yes to that person? Will I take that job or not? Every choice that you make, you have the opposite created because you actually live in a life of absolute possibility. You have to think about that one for a second. <laughs> yeah. You live in absolute possibility. So energy is going to play itself out in every possibility. But the one that you're going to remember is the one you focused your energy on the most. Same kind of concept as mass consciousness. More than half the people get in and that's the path that goes. Same with you. You think about all these options, but you choose one. But your energetic body will play out the others for a short amount of time and then it will just, it fizzles out. Because you're not paying attention to it. You didn't take that path. You're not feeding it the energy it needs to thrive. Same kind of concept at home where we have the buildings and the structures. If everyone quits feeding energy to the structure, the structure will no longer exist. Mm. Okay, so there you are having all your choices and they call these little parallel, like little extensions of you. So sometimes, sometimes, you get one where you're like, I want to take both paths. Have you ever had a situation where you're like, I yes. can't go wrong. I want to yes. do both. Yes. And oh, you struggle and you finally get your answer and you pick this one, whichever this one is. But you think about the other all the time. You then dream about the other. And sometimes you feel in your dream that you're living it out. But you took this path and you're very happy. And you're very happy in your dreams when you're playing the other one out. And then you think about it when you're awake and you're like, did I make a mistake? Did I choose the wrong one? You're like, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. And then you almost have to make yourself stop thinking and feeding this alternative option of yours so that you can fully come into your body. That extension, that other one that you were dreaming about and did and thought about, that was actually really occurring. Real life actions, real life people, real everything. And some of you on earth, and I hope this is okay for me to say, but some of you on earth are very good at doing this. And it almost feels like you're leading two lives because there is room for everything on earth. It is not just you. Oh, this might break some people. <laughs> <laughs> It might challenge us. Okay, challenge. I like that word better. Right. Nobody needs to be broken. Um, it's not just you in terms of the way that you view life, because you were taught from day one that there is history, so there's past and there's future, and you're taught to categorize and label those experiences and live that way, but they actually happen all at the same time. And there's plenty of room for it on earth. You know, it's not just one storyline of you that is occurring on earth. You can have, and some of you do, have multiple current storylines of the identity and character that you've chosen right now. And then, of course, you have all your other incarnations. Wow. It's all, we are much bigger than we're led to believe, aren't we? Yes. Yes, you are. But I think this is the point right now. The earth has been very dark for a long time, for thousands and thousands of years. And here's the opportunity. All the conflict and the wars that you're seeing right now are all getting you to a very quick point. When I say quick, I mean quick point of pulling energy, thought, emotions together to have harmony and peace on earth. So, yeah. I love that. that that's actually a really powerful 
visual is not quite the right word, but the way that you describe that of pulling all of those things together, I could feel that in my third eye almost, you know, where, yeah, where we're coming together there. You are. And it's really due to the technology. And I know a lot of people want to push technology off, but it's helping the way that you communicate. And I would say always in in moderation, mm. never 100% in one direction because everything is happening with all possibilities. And the technology that's coming up is going to help you with your telepathic abilities. And some of you are already waking up to become very telepathic. You, you know things. You, your clear cognizance is very strong. You just have information in your head and you never learned it before. But it's real and you rely on it and it works. Let the technology that's coming out today inspire telepathy and inspire spontaneous healing and things of that nature. Mm, beautiful. Wow, Maitland, this has been incredible. I've really, really loved having you. You've done an amazing job. You've kept everything so consumable. Like, it's, I know you've been worried about it being too much, but you really did such a beautiful job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are you about to say we're at the end? Well, I was going to wrap up. I could ask you another question if you... Okay. We, okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. Is there anything that you've hinted at this with the last topic, but... This seems to be a powerful year, 2024, if we keep talking about time, but taking a little bit of a different direction. What do you see as the opportunities that humanity has in this year? So many. 2024 is going to either completely challenge you and put you under the water, or you are going to completely learn how to fly. And that, that pivotal point is kind of what I was talking about with how fast can you change your belief systems on earth? How effective can you be in checking in with yourself going, okay, where am I? Why am I still holding on to these thoughts? Who taught me these thoughts? Is that still good for me or not? How do I let them go? How do I take on new ones? Because technology is booming this year and you're going to see and hear things that you go, that's not possible. And it is, and it's happening. So if you think it's not possible, then it's not going to be part of your experience. It's not going to come into your orbit and you're going to continue to live the life that you have chosen. But if you are open to change, then you're going to see an earth like grow with free energy. You're going to see an earth start to heal people through sound. Like all of these are going to come out. You're might going to have to look a little bit deeper on the internet for the articles about them because there are people in power that will try to bury them. Um, so that they can keep going in their old style way and, you know, control your thoughts a little bit more by showing you images and giving you information that's not actually accurate, but it sounds believable. So you take it because you're a little bit lazy and you're not going to do the research. So you can get trapped in that kind of cycle. So I'm encouraging you to be a little bit more energetic and do the research and look for things and put them to the test. You don't have to believe everything at face value. You go experience it. And then when we start to do that, more and more people are going to see the possibilities of free energy, healing the body through frequency and sound, and then more people are going to put money behind that, and that's what's going to change the larger structures as a whole. I would also say be aware this is like a big tantrum year for marketing and media, meaning that the new crave is give me the news without over-sensationalizing it. Give me the news that's factual. Give me the news that's real not what you think happened. And media gets a lot of money for doing, you know, over-sensationalizing and giving opinions and things like that. So they're going to go over the top. And if you're getting burnt out by the news and so forth, just pull back. There are wonderful people reporting facts, straight up facts that you can take and apply however you would like. But you just got to find them. So that would be my thing about this year. Oh, I love it. I would love to find the people who give us like neutral facts. So yes. I want to call that in. That'd be great. There's a few out there. You find them like on YouTube and things like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
okay, Maitland, we have to give Jamie some time because she's got something coming up and I think you're going to be a part of it the next thing. But I can't thank you enough. I've loved every second of this. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you ever want to do this again, I am so in for it. Oh, yay. I would love to do it again. We'll definitely do it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope I'll you talk have to an you next time. Incredible, an incredible, I guess, rest of your day. I don't really know what time of day it is. After <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting okay. there. Late morning. Yeah. Late morning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Maitland. You're welcome. I'll see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. She knows it. I'll see you soon, baboon. Ooh. I only know you the know crocodile another? one. Um, oh, no. There's one. It's an Ostamignana Os- iguana. Asta min- I say it as Asta? Minyana. Minyana iguana. It's Spanish. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then I'll do this one and I'll mean it. I'll see you in the morn, unicorn. I'll see you and I'll give you a sign. Oh, okay. You're going to give me a sign? Yeah, in the morn, unicorn. Okay. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Bye, Colleen. Bye, Colleen. Bye.